So let's get into Upper Echelon Gaming and basically his video on uh, BitBoy, the world's most pathetic YouTuber. Spicy. What is it? See, that's, the, that's what he called it. And uh, so I will say that uh, I am a fan of Upper Echelon Gaming. Welcome to the upper. Uh, let's look though and see. I have not watched him in a while. Let's scroll down and see. I don't know if it'll even show. Um, I used to watch him a lot. He's one of those that takes a topic and you know, he's like a review tech USA. He'll take a topic and talk to you about it. He used to be over gaming. Like, so he would game and then he would talk to you over the gameplay about some topic that wasn't necessarily related to the gameplay, uh, which a lot of YouTubers have quit doing that. Uh, even Review Tech USA quit doing that, unfortunately, because I, I actually quite prefer that. Alright, today I want to begin with a bit of a story. How many of you watching this right now have heard of Icarus? For those that haven't, Icarus is an ancient story from Greek mythology about an inventor. Can you guys hear that? Inventor and his son okay. trying to escape loud the king. Daedalus, the greatest inventor of his generation, and Icarus's father. Yeah, we're good? Okay. So he's going on about Icarus right now. I think everybody here is familiar with Icarus and... Uh, I do wish, like, gaming nerds got a, you know. It's fine. Uh, I guess. Made from does... feathers and wax. Gaming nerds always have the exact same, like, story. Like, we all kind of do it, though. I mean, like, it, it's fair, right? We're all stuck in the same ones. I just feel like we, we need to, like, dig deeper into more stories. I need to read more, bro. Uh, I am drinking, um, what am I drinking? Forgot the name of it. It's that good, bro. Um, it's that good, dude. <laughs> Maker's Mark. These wings were made to perfectly mimic the anatomy of birds and allowed both him and his son to fly. This is where the moral lesson of Icarus comes from, because as they flew, overwhelmed by a sense of arrogance and hubris, Icarus began to fly closer and closer to the heavens. Ignoring his father's many warnings and believing himself to be invincible, somehow above the rest of the world, both physically and spiritually, he started to fly so high that the heat from the sun... This is really weird. So is he essentially um, going to be saying that BitBoy flew too close to the sun. In which case, like, I feel like it doesn't add up because, like, his fall is not in, like, I don't know. BitBoy's making a ton of money right now, still, in the bear market. And began melting the wax of his wings. Icarus would ultimately drown in the Black Sea after his wings had fully collapsed after melting in the sun, but the story serves as a... Uh, as far as streaming, no, we're going to be only streaming, you know, Friday nights uh, at this time. Uh, we're going to do the show and then the after party. And then uh, Saturday, we'll be streaming earlier in the day. I don't know what time yet. And then Sunday, we'll be streaming um, in the evening. I think it's six, um, provided I can get, it might be a little late. It might Sunday. We're basically going to have three, four hour streams a day over here on rumble, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A warning to those who are consumed by their perceived status and, and locals, primarily locals. Power. The desire to fly higher <laughs> is not always safe. And though the story is of course fiction, the lessons it teaches are timeless. Today, I'd like to tell the story of BitBoy as he flies ever closer to the sun, carried on wings made of wax, just like Icarus, before falling to his metaphorical death, consumed by social media attention and peer gratification. Let's get started. Who is BitBoy? 
BitBoy, also known as Ben Armstrong, is a social media influencer with 1.45 million followers. His various different channels, including Twitter and YouTube, have been aggressively used for years to promote various different crypto schemes. But more recently, in the aftermath of FTX, Ben Armstrong, aka BitBoy, has turned his eye towards a series of other exploits. Consumed by a sense of self-importance, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> This is rough because how do I put this? Everything. So I have my problems with BitBoy. They're specifically from a technical perspective for the most part, right? Um, he supports XRP. I think I'm vehemently against that. He supported regulation when he talked in Texas. Uh, I'm vehemently against that. Uh, he doesn't like mining or miners. He thinks that everything should go proof of stake. I'm against that. Uh, fundamentally, principally, uh, almost every single aspect of cryptocurrency that I have gotten into a discussion with him on, I disagree with. And I think that he is woefully undereducated on technic uh, the technical aspects of cryptocurrency. And I also think that he is not you know, he doesn't have any technical background as far as like, um, I don't think he's intelligent with computers. I don't think that he's mathematically intelligent. Anything that you would want out of somebody that participates within blockchain, I don't think that he's got any of that. However, I have a massive amount of empathy from the content creator perspective of it because I am a content creator and I understand how the brain works when you are interacting with people on the internet. Um, I, as a content creator, am putting everything out there all the time, trying to do my best. I don't think that BitBoy was doing anything malicious necessarily all the time. I think that he's just stupid, right? I think there's a difference. Um, whereas, like, SBF, I think, is, is doing malicious stuff. I think BitBoy was not and then the money came into play and he wanted to take the money i get it i saw all the emails too super tempting to take 10 to 15 grand for one video right like that's that, that would be amazing that's life changing for me that pays off all of my debt that i've ever fucking had with one video i didn't do it because i have principles surrounding that right it's a little different however like, I get where that comes from. I just think that he was too stupid to realize that they were bad ideas, right? In a lot of cases. Um, that doesn't mean, like, how do I put this? That doesn't, like, that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate the amount of, like, work that he put into YouTube to grow the channel as large as he did is impressive. And then the amount of criticism that comes along with that having an impact on your mental health, which then puts him in a position, right, where he is, uh, he has a, a an inflated ego that then also starts to drive him like into like basically uh, psych, psych, psychopathy or whatever, right? I mean, which is essentially what's happened. I think, like I said, not too long ago, like, you know, I'm I'm worried he's losing his mind. BitBoy has been seeking out extremely hostile interactions with celebrities. He has been spreading rumor after rumor with regards to a larger conspiracy behind the collapse of FTX. And he has been positioning himself as a savior of the industry who had knowledge of fraud long before the public ever knew. All of this, in a twisted, modern sort of way, reminds me of the mythology behind Icarus, because as he is propelled to ever-increasing new heights by his legion of social media fans, he is getting closer and closer to that final moment when the wings melt off and a lonely, naked man comes hurtling back to the surface of the Earth, supported by nothing but empty air. Without further ado, let's take a look at the deceptive, arrogant, and misleading life of BitBoy. But this one is going to a billion. I see an easy 100x in a matter of months for this one. If you don't get in before this rebrand announcement, you will be kicking yourself forever, or at least until you die.
<laughs> or at least until you die. So, first of all, uh, after you die, if there is an afterlife, it's highly unlikely that the currency that you currently use here will be the currency that you utilize um, in the heavens. Um, yeah. No, nah, that's it. I don't have a second of all. <laughs> Strong is currently obsessed with taking down the prior CEO of FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried. His singular mission seems to be massive engagement on social media as he aggressively speculates on and even tries to physically hunt down SBF in the Bahamas. While doing this, he has resorted to tactics that one might consider to be stalking or harassment or any number of unsavory terms. But ignoring the emotional aspect of all this, let's examine who he was before this now viral attempt at becoming the people's champion. Before this tidal wave of shallow credibility, BitBoy Crypto, a.k.a. Ben Armstrong, was a scammer for hire. Posing as a potential part... Why does Upper Echelon... Why is he so mad about this and making a video? Just so... Um, Internet sleuth anyways, Zach XBT, go. whose work was invaluable while constructing this video. I'll link to his social media down below. In Zach XBT is the number one Twitter account to follow for crypto Twitter. By the way. Hand, hands down. Description. Obtain documents that showcase precisely how the process works. Ben Armstrong, during the peak of his scamming career, would offer a series of options to potential projects who then paid the money and received promotions. Confronted by CoffeeZilla, BitBoy claimed that he personally vetted potential partners, denying, quote, 99% of them, while accepting just 1% of partners for actual publication. In the same tweet, he simultaneously says, I personally rigorously vet all paid promotions, as well as we don't promote anything. Obviously, those two phrases are mutually <laughs> exclusive. Even an idiot can see that. He absolutely <laughs> did do various different promotions. Let's start with a central example from which we can build a strong foundation. This is PAMP. PAMP is a scam. Initially pumped in price to over $2. Hell yeah! With less than maybe... PAMP it, baby! A couple dollars in daily volume. Effectively, everyone who got suckered into this token after a certain point lost everything. And one of the people pushing this token was BitBoy. Now, the video itself is currently unlisted. I'll link it down below, no problem there, but it showcases a clear, self-disclosed, paid promotion of the PAMP token, in which Ben Armstrong has a bit of a Freudian slip, calling it the PUMP token. What if I told you there's a project guaranteed to increase in price? You don't want to miss PUMP, if I mean PAMP. I'm pumped up to talk about this one. Still, jokes aside, he elaborates that he does fair reviews with his team and that they won't promote something unless they dig deep into it, which is exactly what they... Uh, this is the problem, though. Like, when we're... Like, you ask about... Like, Chalky was asking about Radiant earlier. Like... BitBoy doesn't have the technical skill to even look at GitHub. Allegedly did with Pam. And so when we go into this, I do think that a lot of this has a lot more to do with how unintelligent he is surrounding technology. than I think that it's malicious. You definitely don't want to miss this one. I do fair reviews with my team and I won't promote something that we don't dig deep into. And that's exactly what we did. One small problem. PAMP was, by every single conceivable definition out there, a pump and dump scheme where influencers like Ben Armstrong. I don't think Upper Echelon, you actually know that for a fact. Like, I don't think given, I don't think Upper Echelon, given the, given the white paper of PAMP would be able to pick it out. So I. It's like it's it like hindsight 2020 for a majority of dumbasses that don't know anything, right? Simply served to generate exit liquidity. That term for those unfamiliar is very common in the world of crypto. Like like I'm just saying like it's 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 an unfair statement. And refers to the practice where new investors need to be lured in so that prior investors with big air quotes around that can dump tokens on them and get out of the scam. This is exceptionally common in the industry and happens at scale every single day. 
For PAMP insiders, BitBoy Crypto was one of their chosen mechanisms to produce this liquidity, aka fresh suckers, and dump everything that they hold on unsuspecting retail investors. So why does it matter? It matters because BitBoy is now some sort of quasi-celebrity detective in the crypto world, and yet his past is just about as shady as humanly possible. To demonstrate this and create a sort of callback for later, we need to talk about another YouTuber named Atazi. Atazi created a video in November of 2021 called This YouTuber Scams His Fans BitBoy Crypto, in which he mercilessly criticized BitBoy's track record, particularly the PAMP scam promotion, while also highlighting some other issues. It's an excellent video, by the way, and I'll link that down below as well. Here's the thing. Ben Armstrong, BitBoy Crypto, was anything but- So he's just talking about the Atazi suit, right? Um. The yeah. But pleased about this. Drama is weird, bro. Was to sue Atazi on the basis of defamation for causing damage to his business and severe anxiety. He initially filed the lawsuit on August twelfth, twenty twenty two. He clearly doesn't practice. He's not on the mats, guys. You guys were act. You guys were asking if I would, you know, roll with him. I'd roll with him. But uh, if uh, if somebody talking shit about you causes severe anxiety, then you're not you're not getting choked out every day. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When somebody talks shit about me on social media, I go get choked out or get arm barred or triangled, like rear naked choked, and then I just don't give a fuck, man. I move on with my day. But after less than two weeks on August twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. He move on, move on with my day, bro. Lawsuit. Interestingly, he said this about why it was filed in the first place on that very same live stream. Uh, but yeah, so we are going to drop the lawsuit, 100%. And uh, I'm sorry this became public. I'm sorry that uh, this has been, uh, you know, uh, misconstrued. But I just want you guys to understand why. It's not frivolous. When someone implies that you can be in trouble from the SEC, that is not frivolous, guys. That's a very, very, very serious, serious matter. That is not frivolous, guys. That's a very, very, very serious, serious. I'm gonna go back to that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back to that. Uh, hold on, I'm, cause it, it applies here. Who? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go back to. I'm gonna go back to this. Whoever appeals to the law against this fellow man is either a fool or a coward. <laughs> this. There you go. This matter. It's important to understand the context on this. BitBoy, Ben Armstrong, promoted a blatant scam to his audience. Atazi, another YouTuber, covered that scam, calling it out for what it was, and BitBoy decided to sue him. After the suit was filed, additional creators began to cover the issue, a spectacular real-time example of the Streisand effect took place, and larger crypto investors even jumped in at the chance to donate money towards Atazi's legal fees, which spurred, in less than two weeks, a complete reversal by BitBoy, who ran away with his tail between his legs. Suffice it to say, a scammer is often a coward, and BitBoy Crypto exhibited these characteristics extremely well. However, yep, there you go. Perfectly fits. Wow, we started today's stream off with a Lamb of God quote, and it is just proven out to just. It's Let's the theme deep. today, it boys. Turns out BitBoy Crypto has promoted numerous different scam tokens, and now, in the face of renewed scrutiny as a result of his escalating hubris, he has begun deleting those videos and hiding them from the public. It is a good Let's song. Let's take a look at Lock. Also known as Meridian Network, this token went from six hundredths of a penny, very small initially, to six millionths of a penny, in what can only be described <laughs> as one of the most obvious scam projects in human history. The website is now dead, the Twitter has been completely purged, and BitBoy has deleted his videos, both of them, that heavily promoted the project to all of his fans. Recovered by Zach XBT, we can also look at Zhao Finance. Well, I was telling you guys about this, right? Way before.
Way before. Good boy crypto. He's currently the largest, I believe, the largest uh, cryptocurrency YouTuber out right now. And he was talking about. Uh, I told you all to just say. Long time ago. Finance, a token that exit scammed, meaning a singular moment in time where the funds were stolen and removed by the criminals behind the project, where BitBoy directly promoted the coin on Twitter, only to delete that promotion once the scam had been fulfilled. How about another one? DISTX. This one was heavily promoted by BitBoy, even so far as to have an officially announced partnership between them. Flash forward, and the official Twitter account has been deleted, while the token lost nearly 100% of value because it was yet another blatantly obvious pump and dump scam. Yet again, Ethereum Yield, E-T-H-Y, where BitBoy Crypto did an entire dedicated video on the project, and the price yep. is now down almost 95%. Well, up. I can also show you guys, like, every single one of these projects that emailed me and offered me, like, $10,000 to make a video. If they're offering me $10,000, like... How much are they offering an account with a million followers, right? But all of them. All of the, like, I have all the fucking emails. ...out all his fans, and he has since, of course, deleted the video. The list goes on and on and on. BitBoy Crypto has promoted an entire portfolio of rug pulls, scam projects, and deceptive tokens, after which he will take down, turn private, or full-scale delete evidence after the damage has already been done. Mm -hmm. But we're not even close to being done with him. In the aftermath of FTX collapsing, BitBoy has championed himself as one of the most hardcore advocates against Sam Bankman-Fried, possibly on planet Earth. For fuck's sake, he's even in the Bahamas right now, or was a day ago, harassing Sam at the Albany, demanding justice for all the people that were scammed, but let's dig into that. Less than one week before FTX imploded, BitBoy came out with a sort of apology video of sorts, saying that there is a problem with token promotions in the crypto space and saying it needs to be eradicated completely. He admits to having done these promotions in the past, but more importantly, he makes a list of what is and is not okay to promote. One of his what works items is exchange sponsorships, and that's where we need to start looking. Turns hmm. out that BitBoy has directly promoted FTT, the token of FTX now recognized as one of, if not the biggest frauds in all of crypto history. BitBoy said that everything SBF, Sam Bankman-Fried, touches turns to gold, continuing on to claim that FTT was one of the only tokens that could go up during a bear market. All we have is this condensed clip right now. I was unable to find the original <laughs> for this one. I suspect because evidence is being systematically deleted. The hmm. track record here is abysmal, but it gets worse. Celsius Network, a lending platform that declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy early on, while myself and numerous other creators constantly warned about its unsustainable business model, was one of BitBoy's most frequent promotions on the channel. Here he is, calling it the hottest DeFi project of 2020, when Celsius is the very antithesis of decentralized finance, in fact. And this video contains over 45 minutes of That's... BitBoy platforming and promoting yeah. Alex Mashinsky. But when Celsius inevitably declared bankruptcy, BitBoy would begin to say things like, you can't possibly ever support Celsius Network or CEO Alex Mashinsky in any way. Basically, the perfect 180. This man is a fraud of the highest order, and I fully recognize that he is- I just don't know if it's a full fraud. Like, to a certain extent, I'm going to stick to my guns, Upper Echelon. I'm going to say that he's just not intelligent enough to pick out what's bad and what's good. And then when it, it ends up being bad- He's like, oh, fuck, I'm, I I got to, you know, fix this so I don't lose all my YouTube subscribers, right? Like, that's just, you know. Yeah. It's likely too stupid to adequately respond here and might file a lawsuit as he did with Atazi. Yeah, he says too too stupid to yeah. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's too stupid. But let's discuss that angle as well. Remember, Atazi highlighted instances where Ben Armstrong, Bit Bitch Crypto, exposed his audience to paid advertising on scam projects for his own benefit, and the response was to sue him for defamation. But the truth is not defamatory. Anyway. However, more recently, BitBoy has been relentlessly attacking Kevin O'Leary, a host of Shark Tank, the famous show, for his involvement with FTX and his defense of Sam Bankman-Fried. 
whether or not you believe that Kevin O'Leary was involved, whether or not. I mean, I talked shit about that too. It is what it is, right? Like, I think I had like I one tweet. Thank but... you for should be stalked, harassed, imprisoned, what have you. BitBoy decided that attacking Kevin O'Leary was so important, he would stoop, well, he'd stoop down to this. It turns out that Kevin O'Leary's wife, as per the police report and court documents, was found not guilty after a boat crash resulted in the deaths of two people. Whether or not Kevin was really the one driving the boat, as BitBoy alleges numerous times, whether or not the other boat was actually driving with no lights on, which is illegal and makes it harder to see, whether or not the entire thing is some elaborate conspiracy or not, Mrs. O'Leary, not Kevin himself, was charged with a crime and found not guilty by a court of law. What does BitBoy do? Takes to social media saying, quote, the fact is Kevin O'Leary is a murderer, end quote. Now, unlike the frivolous bullshit lawsuit levied by BitBoy against Atazi, that right there actually is defamation. In a long drawn out and mostly one-sided feud with a business mogul, BitBoy is now making factual claims that the person is a- See, do you guys realize that like, that's what I'm saying, like, uh, I, I think he's stupid. Murderer. That is not frivolous, guys. That's a very, very, very serious, serious matter. <laughs> when court documents evidence. <laughs> it's good editing, bro. Have clearly outlined for the purpose of legality here that Kevin O'Leary was not driving the boat. His wife was innocent of manslaughter of what she was accused and that the case should be dismissed. That right there is Icarus flying way too close to the goddamn sun. Here's a bonus. As if pushing Celsius Network wasn't enough, only to turn on it after Chapter 11 bankruptcy was declared, thus investors had all of their funds frozen, or defaming a business mogul with murder, like literally murder accusations, promoting scam token after scam token after scam token, and even pushing FTT as he rebrands himself as a crypto savior, BitBoy also decided it would be a good idea to plagiarize content for his YouTube channel. Exposed by a journalist named Vince, no idea how to pronounce that last name, on Twitter, BitBoy had taken his prediction article, word for word here, not inspired by or quoted, stolen with precision, and voiced it inside his own video about a project called Tezos. Tezos is a blockchain that has never operated on the proof of work protocol. As a result, the proof of stake environment that Tezos was built is far more robust than the current state of trading new Ethereum via proof of work. The other big thing to mention here is Tezos and the applications, teams, and projects are traditionally centered around security and audit issues. <laughs> I mean, elements of Tezos, I, I can't judge. We, we literally read the articles to you guys. I mean, it's a little different, I guess. Like, it's a reaction to the articles, and I'm not hiding the fact that I'm reading the article because I literally pull the article up and read it to you. I, I just do it. I just do it. <laughs> I just do it in the. I just do it in the, in the ethical, moral way. To do it can be done both from a personal wallet or from an exchange. <laughs> All right, so I'm not gonna go anymore. <laughs> but I needed to make this video. Needed to call this guy out. Uh, this guy just blatantly plagiarizes people. Uh, I don't know who else he's done it to, but I know it's someone who just wrote their first. Uh, piece of content on this subject um, that this guy just blatantly plagiarizes people. So uh, I hope this message is, this message gets out there and people can make their own opinions about it. Thank you. In the grand scheme of things, by itself, people might not think it's a big deal. Bitboy Crypto, Ben Armstrong, is unhinged. Think about this in context. A YouTuber who yeah. previously took tens of thousands of dollars per project to promote tokens starts wholesale deleting the videos, promotions, tweets, and articles mm -hmm. that pertain to the scams after the scam has absconded with the cash. Yeah. That same influencer fires off baseless lawsuits when called out for such behavior sure. under the guise of defamation mm -hmm. while going on to state as a fact that business mogul Kevin O'Leary <sighs> is a murderer because of a settled court case where his wife was found not guilty. In addition, okay. he plagiarizes content, offers stone-cold guarantees of financial return, despite the fact he is not a registered financial advisor, and yet the tokens that he claims are 100% moonshot, get-rich-quick options, perform like this. His entire video library is a goldmine of incriminating behavior. 
dozens of the worst projects in the entire space were relentlessly promoted by him for personal gain, yeah. resulting in untold damage to investors. Now, now he is traipsing across the world to get kicked out of hotels as he tries to hunt down another crypto scammer, takes one to no one, and cement his place as some sort of credible altruistic crypto Batman. BitBoy, Ben Armstrong, is a pest. He is a disease in the community that somehow tricked enough people into watching him or believing him that he can ride a wave of outrage across the world and maybe, if he plays his cards right, sanitize his reputation in the process. Whether or not he is allowed to do so remains to be seen, but Icarus, in my opinion, has flown far too close to the sun here, and his wings are currently melting. If you want support, check out the links down below. If he sues me, I already have an entire game plan mapped out, <laughs> but I'll keep you posted. Have a nice night. Hmm. Oopai says at a certain point you can't play everything on stupidity. It's far beyond that. I don't know, man. I think a majority of it's stupidity. I think he's trying to recover it, but I don't think you should let him. I've been on around the blockchain like twice, I think. Um, was treated pretty poorly by BitBoy himself. So I didn't ever have like a high opinion or anything like that. That being said, like, yeah, I wonder, I don't know. Intention. Yeah, well, I don't know if it does intention. I mean, yeah, intention does hold up, right? I make a lot of dumb mistakes, right? So, I was kind of like, uh, see, I would never come out with a video like Upper Echelon did. Right. I would never come out with, uh, um, I just, I wouldn't attack somebody like that. This is not like my, like, it's just, not, it's not the way, because I understand that we all make mistakes, I suppose. Right. Um, and I don't like, you gotta be careful there i feel like um that being said like if a project's lying if it if a project's lying i get pretty pissed off i've been pretty vocal about ergo to be fair <laughs> 